Hi, welcome to the Rochelle Parks and Recreation Adult Softball Online Managers Meeting. This 15-minute video is designed to provide you with all the necessary league information for the fall 2016 season to ensure that your team gets the most out of your season here at Roseville. First, we want to thank you for choosing to play your fall softball here with the City of Roseville. We understand that you have many softball options throughout the metro area, and we appreciate that you have chosen to play with us. We have more than 78 teams spread over five nights of play, and we are very excited with all that we have to offer. The goal of our leagues are to provide a safe, well-organized, sportsmanly, fun, and fair atmosphere to participants of all backgrounds and skill levels. All policies and procedures here in this league are made with that goal in mind. First off, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Lake Johnson and I am the Recreation Supervisor in charge of softball here at Roseville. I can be reached by either email or phone with any questions or concerns that you may have. My primary method of communication with managers will be by email. If you do not use email, please let me know as soon as possible so that I know that I need to contact you by phone or other means if any changes are made. The league website is cityofroseville.com slash softball. Your softball schedules will be linked on that site, or they can also be visited directly at teamsideline.com slash rpr. League schedules will be posted on Monday, August 8th. Any schedule changes that are made will be posted on the league page. Additionally, if any changes are made, managers will be emailed to inform you of that change. In addition, as you can see, the league pages do indicate update, updated standing and results for each game. We do encourage managers to check back often to let us know if there are scores entered incorrectly so we can make sure that we keep accurate tabs on the league. Games are scheduled to begin on Sunday, August 14th, and each subsequent day afterwards. For example, Monday games begin August 15th, Tuesday games begin August 16th, and so on. Each league will have a playoff for the top eight teams. Brackets will be posted on the league page following the final game of the season. Rosters. Managers will be emailed the blank roster form, but can also be found on the league schedule page or on our softball league page. All teams are required to provide a roster prior to the fir their first games. Rosters must include all players that you intend to use on your team at any point during the season. Substitute players will be allowed during the regular season, but only rostered players may be used in the playoffs. When selecting substitutions, please consider the skill level of your league and not bring in quote-unquote ringer players who may make the balance of the league unfair. Teams who do not submit a roster will in fact forfeit a game if they are protested against. Please also remember this is an adult league, so only individuals that are 18 or older may participate in our league. If games are in question, please contact our weather website that can be found on the league page or schedule page or call the weather hotline by 4.30 p.m. Play or no play decisions will be based on the status of the fields as of 4.15 p.m., not based upon any forecasted conditions or projections. There have been several situations in the past in which forecasts have been wrong, in which 100% rain was projected but skies cleared up and games were able to be played. If conditions prior to 4.30 dictate that fields will be unplayable, we will make every effort to update the weather website as early as possible to let you know if games will be canceled. Should conditions change after 4.30, the umpire on site will make the final play or no play decision based upon the conditions of their field. In the event of after-hour cancellations, we will make every attempt to update the weather hotline, but cannot do so until we receive confirmation that all fields have been canceled for the night. Should rainouts occur, please, we will allow up to two weeks of rainouts to be rescheduled. Please remember that game time is the game time listed on your schedule. Teams should be prepared to be ready to play at that time. A 10-minute grace period will be allowed for 6 o'clock games, but that time does mean that 10 minutes will be removed from your game time. So teams should try every effort to be ready to play by 6 p.m. 
A five minute grace period will also be allowed for all other game times. But remember, that five minutes will be deducted from your total playing time. Once a team has eight players present, they must begin and cannot wait for the ninth or tenth player to arrive. Games will be seven innings long, with no new inning set to begin 55 minutes from the scheduled start time. Please remember, if you must forfeit your game, please contact your opponent as well as our office by phone as soon as possible. Nobody likes to show up for a game and not have a team to play. However, we do encourage teams to make every effort to field a team for each game, so teams can continue to receive the same number of games. Game balls for the entire season will be distributed at your first game. Managers will be given a package of balls containing one game ball per home game. Managers must bring a ball to each of their home games. If a home team fails to provide a new game ball, they will begin that game behind 3-0. to zero. Visiting teams should also be prepared to provide one used ball in the event that primary game ball is hit out of play. For playoff games, umpires will have game balls ready at the field. Teams will also be provided a scorebook at their first game, but more information will be provided at that during later slides. Please remember, in accordance with statewide USSA standards, all non-wood bats must have the new USSA stamp on them. The old text U-Triple-S-A logo will not be accepted. Only the new stamp that is permanently stamped on the bat will be accepted. Bats must also be unaltered and comply with U-Triple-S-A rule number two. Umpires will be instructed to check all bats prior to the first game of the season. Teams will be given a scorebook at their first game. Each team is expected to keep book for each game. At the conclusion of each half inning, please confer with the umpire and the other scorekeeper to ensure that all three parties have the same score. In the event of a discrepancy, if it is caught at the end of a half inning, it should be easy to compare books to correctly assess the correct score. However, if errors are allowed to persist, it is often difficult to go back two, three, or four innings to correct them. So please be certain to check with the umpire and the opposing scorekeeper at the end of each half inning. Conduct and sportsmanship. The primary focus of all Roseville leagues will be fun. Teams are expected to utilize good sportsmanship at all time toward their opponents, the umpire, and your own teammates. As managers, please prevent your team from getting into trash talking with other teams or arguing with the umpire. Remember, you are the leader out there. Please remember that the focus of these games should be on fun and recreational. All umpires officiating in the city of Roseville are expected to be USSA certified. Additionally, this year the city has implemented a Roseville-only umpires meeting to discuss local rules and its expectations for umpires. Teams may reasonably expect umpires to be on time, behave professionally, to hustle, and to briefly discuss a call with a manager if he or she approaches in a respectful manner after time has been granted. It is unreasonable of teams to expect umpires to call every call correct, to know every single rule of the large triple S A rulebook inside and out, to tolerate frequent complaints and or verbal abuse, to tolerate comments about the umpire's integrity, or that are personal in nature, such as, are they paying you today, or you're terrible. And it is unreasonable to expect an umpire to tolerate complaints about balls and strikes. Overall, judgment calls are not open to dispute. Teams must learn to live with the fact that umpires will make calls that will not agree, you will not agree with and must move on with the game. When dealing with umpires, please keep the following items in mind. First, only team managers or the player involved may discuss a call with an umpire and only after time is granted by the umpire. 
Discussions must be respectful. No shouting or gesturing or profanity will be tolerated. After the umpire has given his or her explanation, the manager must return to his position or dugout immediately. Please note, rule interpretations may be formally protested in accordance with Roseville Parks and Recreation rules, as found in the rule book, but judgment calls are indeed final and not open for protest. The following actions will result in warning or immediate ejection if observed by an umpire. Please prevent players on your team from engaging in any of the following actions. Continuous complaints about judgment calls. Any player besides the manager leaving their position to argue a call. Shouting at an umpire. Use of profanity. Use of personal statements towards an umpire threats or taunting any other player, spectator, or umpire, or continuing a behavior after receiving a warning. Roseville Leagues are continuously looking to improve our umpire evaluations program. That being said, managers will be sent an umpire evaluation on one or two dates throughout the season. The evaluations will be asking you to evaluate one of the umpires during your games. Please evaluate the umpire based on their professionalism, hustle, rule knowledge, and game management. Please do not base your evaluation upon the outcome of the game or whether or not you felt judgment calls were ruled for or against your favor. If you have an exceptionally good or bad experience with an umpire, feel free to fill out our umpire's evaluation form, which is located on the league website. Park Rules Please remind your teams to clean out your dugout and dugout areas before you leave for the night. Please ensure that no bottles or other items are left behind in your dugouts. Additionally, please be respectful of the neighbors and pedestrians who may be walking throughout the parks while you are there. Make sure that your team members are not using profanity or anything else that may make residents uncomfortable. Finally, please note that City Ordinance does prohibit the use of alcohol and tobacco in Roseville Parks. In the fall of 2015, the Capital Region Watershed District installed a cistern underneath the Beedale slash Villa field. This was installed to help reduce flooding in the area and reduce the runoff to Lake McCarran's, which was causing pollution. The cistern being installed under the field has allowed us to continue to use the field moving forward while mitigating some of these flooding issues. Additionally, the installation of the cistern will allow us to use runoff water for watering the fields, which will save an estimated 1.3 million gallons of water annually. Because of the excavation that was associated with this project, there is an egg line installed along the right field line. There are plans to reinstall sod after the fall 2016, so grass should be ready to go by 2017. League Playing Rules Although there have been multiple Roseville revisions of the USSSA rulebook, here are a few that we would like to highlight. First, the home run limits. The men's seed division has a maximum of four home runs and plays with the plus one rule, which was implemented this past summer league. Please note, only the seed division will use this plus one rule. Also note that in the final inning of a game, either the seventh inning, extra inning, or if the umpire has declared final inning due to time, the home team may no longer go one up on their opponent. Men's D Divisions has two home runs. Correct C has two home runs. Correct D allows no home runs, with the exception to the short field at Central Park Lexington Northwest, then you are allowed one home run. Please note, any home run beyond the limit will only be one out, which differs from the USSSA rule. All leagues will use a three ball and two strike count with no courtesy foul. This means that if a player has one strike against them and hits a foul ball, they will be out. Players are not permitted to dig into the batter's box by kicking dirt out of the way as they come to the box. However, players may kick dirt around to even out the spot that they are batting in, essentially filling in the holes that were, that were already made, but not by digging into the batter's box. 
no metal spikes will be permitted in our leagues and courtesy runners will be limited to one courtesy runner per inning. The courtesy runner will be the last person to be put out. Double play situations. In an effort to prevent injury, Roseville has clarified the double play rule. All runners must either slide legally or attempt to get out of the way of the fielder, turning to complete the double play. For a slide to be legal, players must remain on the ground and slide directly toward the base. The image that is being shown on the slide would be considered legal in Major League Baseball, but considered illegal in our league as the runner is not going directly toward the base and his right leg is elevated and is not on the ground. This would be ruled an out not only for the runner sliding, but also the runner at first base, granting the double play regardless of where the shortstop's throw ended up. Additionally, we have implemented a prohibition on hitting the ball back towards the pitcher intentionally in an effort to intimidate the pitcher. This can also be referred to as lighting up or buzzing the pitcher. If an umpire is confident that a team is intentionally hitting the ball at the pitcher, they are instructed to warn and then eject the offender. This is a dangerous situation that can lead to severe injury and even death. Please do not allow members of your team to intentionally hit the ball back up in the middle in an effort to intimidate the pitcher. At the conclusion of the season, each regular season and playoff champion will receive a championship t-shirt and their choice of a trophy or a restaurant gift card. I will be contacting each manager who is entitled to prizes following the conclusion of the season to obtain their sizes as well as determine which award they would like. In conclusion, please remember that we want this league to be well organized, safe, and with an emphasis on sportsmanship. Managers, I ask you to please be leaders out there on the field. Encourage your teams to follow suit. Keep these games in perspective. Yes, competition is important, but we want all participants to be safe and have fun above all else. Please do not hesitate to contact me with any questions or concerns throughout the entirety of the season. For those managers participating in CORAC divisions as well, we do have a few additional slides available to clarify some of the CORAC rule modifications that we have in place. Finally, I thank you once again for choosing Roseville for your fall softball league. I wish everyone a safe and fun season and best of luck, and I hope to see many of you out on the fields. Thank you.